the next speaker is uh, Dr. Koichi Akiyama. He is a board certified cardiac anesthesiologist and the director of uh, the Japanese Society of Cardiovascular Anesthesia. Currently, he is appointed to a lecturer at Kindai University in Osaka. His research interest is on blood flow analysis and cardiovascular disease. He studied on blood flow kinetics at Columbia University in New York and published many papers in this field. He's going to talk about blood flow analysis in patients with congenital heart disease and its significance for decision-making process. Please go ahead, Akiyama Sensei. Thank you. It's a great honor to be able to speak today. I would like to express my thanks to Toronto Fellow Variable Echo Symposium staff for inviting me. My name is Coach Akiyama. My presentation is about blood flow analysis in patients with congenital heart disease. So today the contents are introduction, strategy for single ventricle, CFD analysis of quantum circulation, 40 flow MR analysis of a case, and vector flow mapping analysis in single ventricle physiology. Um, next slide. So our methods consist of three modalities, echo-based vector flow mapping, MRI-based 40 flow MRI, and CD-based computational fluid dynamics. These technologies can visualize blood flow and calculate novel parameters, such as the energy loss, Walsh stress, and oscillatory share index. Next slide. A vector flow mapping is a technique for analyzing blood flow from echocardiographic images. Next slide. These vector flow mapping movies are created from both color Doppler and spectral tracking. Color Doppler can measure velocity along scan line and spectral tracking can measure the wall velocity in the transverse direction. Then the vector of the neighbor pixel on the wall is determined and the vector of the next pixel can be calculated by continuity equation sequentially. Next slide. The phase contrast method of MRI is based on the principle that the phase difference proton precession in any magnetic field direction is proportional to the velocity of water molecule movement. This allows for obtaining the velocity distribution of water flow in any direction and performed with the magnetic field in three directions, anterior posterior, left to right, and upper, up to down over multiple slices. The velocity field as a vector can be determined three-dimensionally including temporal variation. This is called the 4D flow MRI. Next slide. <clears throat> Another blood flow analysis modality is computer-based fluid simulation. This method involves inputting appropriate information, such as the pressure or velocity. And inlets and outlets of vascular geometry obtained from uh, patient's medical images. The navi stokes equations are then approximately solved by a computer to calculate blood flow. Next slide. <clears throat> the analysis region of interest is divided into small regions called meshes. Within each mesh, the Conservation equations for flow rate and momentum related to blood flow are approximately solved by a computer, obtaining blood flow velocity and blood pressure information at each mesh point. Since it's not easy to obtain an exact solution to the Navier-Stokes Navi equation, the fundamental equation of fluid, fluid dynamics, approximate solutions are obtained using a computer. The calculation needs to be repeated to ensure that the left and right strikes, left and right sides of the equation fall within an infinitely small margin of error. 
For this reason, a vast amount of computation is required, and a large computer needs to spend a long time calculating just one cardiac cycle. Next slide. As a result of computational fluid dynamics analysis, blood flow is visualized and information such as blood flow rate, will share stress on the vessels, pressure, and blood flow energy loss values can be obtained. Next slide. Next, we will move on to discussing uh, treatment strategies for single ventricle condition. Single ventricle is a collective term for a group of diseases that have hemodynamics dependent on only one functional ventricle for both systemic and pulmonary circulation. Next slide. If the main ventricle is a morphologic right ventricle, it's called a single right ventricle. If it's a morphologic left ventricle, it's called a single left ventricle. Next slide. In generally stages afterwards, the first stage of parallel surgery is performed depending on whether the pulmonary blood flow is high or low. Then around six months of age, when pulmonary vascular resistance decreases, the second stage of parallel surgery is performed. Finally, the last stage of parallel surgery is performed between around 18 months and four years old, when the pulmonary vascular rate becomes larger. Next slide. As the first stage parallel surgery, for example, in collision with low pulmonary blood flow, such as tricuspid arteria, a BT shunt is created to maintain pulmonary blood flow. For condition with high pulmonary blood flow, such as DORV, peer binding is performed to restrict pulmonary blood flow. Next slide. After three months when pulmonary vascular resistance decreases, the second stage of palliative surgery known as grain procedure is performed. Next slide. Once the pulmonary vascular bed has grown larger, the final palliative surgery, the fontan procedure is performed. Nakata suggested that the PA index should be 250 or more. While Fontan considered 200 or more to be sufficient for performing the Fontan procedure. Next slide. Itatani, through theory analysis, created Fontan models of various PA index that take respiratory variations into account. He simulated the energy loss values and IVC pressure for each model and demonstrated uh, that a uh, PA index of 110 or more is sufficient. Next slide. Furthermore, Itatani conducted CFD analysis on quantum models with conduit of various diameters, calculating energy loss values and the volume of stagnant blood flow within the conduit and demonstrated that a diameter of 16 to 18 millimeters is optimal for conduit. Next slide. The conduit in the classical fontan procedure passes to the right of the right atrium, but Nagashima reported a modification where it passes in front of the right atrium. How does this modification affect the flow of IVC blood into the pulmonary arteries. It is very important for IVC blood flow, which includes hepatic venous blood, to reach the lungs. If hepatic factors do not flow, arterial venous fistula in the lungs can occur, leading to worsening oxygenation. Next slide. By creating and analyzing CFD models with various anterior angles at the anastomosis side of the fontan conduit to the pulmonary artery, it was found that the steeper the angle, 
the one the SVC blood flow mixes with the IBC blood flow, resulting in a more balanced distribution of IBC blood flow to both the left and right pulmonary arteries. Next slide. It was also found that as the angle increases, the amount of stagnant blood flow within the conduit decreases. Next slide. Next example of CFD analysis in case of complex congenital heart disease will be presented. The diagnosis is polysplenia, dextrocardia, cardia, six sign syndrome, right aortic arch, absence of IBC, ajax connection. The SVC is on the right side, hepatic veins are on the left side. After creating a TCP, TCPS in the initial frontal procedure, a 16 mm straight graph was used to anastomose the hepatic vein to the pulmonary artery. But the hepatic flow did not flow into the right pulmonary artery, leading to the formation of right pulmonary artery venous vistula. In the reoperation, an 18 mm wide graft was anastomosed from the hepatic vein to each of the left and right pulmonary arteries. Next slide. Theory analysis that look into account respiratory variations was performed to see how the hepatic vein flow was affected. As shown in the movie, the hepatic vein flow is observed to reach the right pulmonary artery as well after the wide graft anastomosis. Next slide. Post-operative angiography shows a small amount of flow from the hepatic vein to the right limb of the white graph. Next slide. Next, I will talk about an example of the analysis of Fontan case using 44 MRI. Next slide. This is a case of a patient who underwent APC Fontan surgery and was converted to TCPC due to inadequate blood flow to the pulmonary artery. After the conversion, coronary venous pressure decreased and the left ventricular wall motion also improved. Next slide. 44 MRI analysis shows before the conversion, there was significant blood flow stagnation in the right atrium, but after the conversion, the blood flow was smooth. The energy loss in front and circulation also decreased, and the cardiac output increased. Next slide. Next, we will move on to the discussion about vector flow mapping analysis derived from echocardiographic images. Next slide. Here you can see the large vortex under the anterior or mitral leaflet during diastole in the left movie. This vortex is normal vortex, which is a clockwise rotation in the TTE image. Right movie demonstrates the energy loss image. Brighter area indicates higher energy loss. Next slide. This movie is big for mapping of TEE image. This is mirror image of the TTE. So the large vortex under the anterior mitral leaflet is counterclockwise rotation. Next slide. The figure shows the normal vortex. The vortex has very important role promoting inflow, preserving momentum, minimizing energy loss and redirecting to the outflow effectively. Next slide. It is known that the outcome of post-mitral valve repair patients are better than post-mitral valve replacement patients. How the interventricular vortex changes after the mitral valve surgery? 
The movie shows after Michael Val repair. Normal vortex pattern was preserved after Michael Val repair. Next slide. But after mitral valve replacement, the vortex was in both rotation after mitral valve replacement. Next slide. The reason of this condition is quite unnatural. Mitral valve is leading the inflow to apex, but the artificial valve leads the inflow to the perpendicular direction of mitral annulus. Therefore, the inflow collides with the anteroceptor wall and ejection flow collides with stent post and energy loss increase. Next slide. When examining vortices in a single ventricle, it is found that the vortex pattern in a single left ventricle is the same as in a healthy, left, uh, healthy individual. In this case, the vorticity, which indicates the rotational speed of the vortex, was 530.8. Next slide. In the case of single light ventricle, the vortex pattern is the same, but the vorticity in this case was lower at 344.1. Next slide. When comparing the vorticity between five cases of single right ventricle and five cases of single left ventricle, it was found that the vorticity was significantly lower in single right ventricle. This is thought to be because the morphology of the right ventricle creates a gentle curve from the inflow tract to the outflow tract which prevents the formation of an effective vortex. Next slide. This is the final slide. In congenital heart disease, surgeries on the right heart system are frequently performed. After surgery on the right heart system, the volume load on the left ventricle increases, making the diastolic function of the left ventricle crucial. A parameter that is gaining attention as an indicator of left ventricular diastolic function is the IVPD. The next speaker, Dr. Takahashi, will be giving a lecture on this topic. Next slide. Thank you for your attention.